Was there any moments of doubt? It was when I shot my first music video in like a full on record label, hundred thousand dollar, you know, and it was a complete disaster. <laughs> we talk about process, right? Welcome to Profits and Process. I'm your host, again, Ryan Grant. And uh, today's episode is with a man that I'm a big fan of and a lot of people are fans of. And I've been a fan from afar and have watched him set the stage in a culture and in a field that I think so many people have tried to step into and He's just dominated in so many different in ways and really helped set the standard for so many different people in the film industry and the, uh, I would say the directorial space of our culture, of uh, hip hop culture in many ways and evolved into a lot of different spaces. Um, he goes by many monikers. <laughs> you might know him as Lil X, Director X, and uh, I think at presently Julian. As I well. mean, yeah. I, I, I've combined it all. Yeah, you're going Ju by it all. The sentence, Julian Christian Lutz, PKA Director X. Word. Yeah, that one gets it all. That, 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 yeah, that gets it all. That, yeah. that covers it all. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to be able to sit down and hear, uh, hear his process and uh, find the value in, uh, in his perspective. And also, I want to, you know what I want to say? Because this is a very impromptu actual podcast because he came on a whim <laughs> and I really appreciate it. appreciate you know the the time and just him being willing to step into this because I know it was kind of last minute so thank you brother All you know, good, much man. respect man. absolutely so uh I usually start off these this conversation with people is um it's introspective you know it's casual but I like to start off with uh a question for everyone where I ask what do you do I'm a director um, music videos, commercials, television shows, film, and uh, on the community side, I founded an organization uh, to bring meditation into the world of gun violence and trauma from violence called Operation Prefrontal Cortex. So that's kind of the, that's the range. I really want to get into the prefrontal cortex, but we're going to save yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we're we'll going to get there because that's, that's my shit. <laughs> What brought you into that space? Directing? Regards, yeah, directing. We talk about process, right? And it's this, uh, this process from when I, I was a kid. I thought I was going to draw comic books. And when I was a little kid, I would draw comic book characters. And, you know, uh, some of my first memories is playing was drawing superheroes yeah. in the doctor's office. I have this memory on computer paper. Remember the old computer paper? Yeah, we'll yeah, go through yeah, those old like, print. Yeah, the yeah. big one. Drawing big scenes and making sounds as a little kid. And then uh, in junior high, I was drawing comic books of my friends. I learned how to draw from draw copying comic books. Right, and I just copy yeah, that's that that'll do it. But I changed the I changed the costume, so I'd be the person. But then, and I named I made everyone like my friends. We're the Omen instead of the X Men. You know what I'm saying? Like kid shit. And I drew like like nine, ten. Like I drew full issues of these. Fucking, that's what's up, though. I drew full issues. Yeah, of, yeah and it's you know what I mean. Uh, so first year of high school. By the time I was in high school, I could draw a fucking book on my own. I didn't read references anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I came across oh. I'm on the school bus and someone hands a party flyer to me, a hand-drawn party flyer. And I go, I could do this, you know what I'm saying? And um, I started, I think I found the guy, found this promoter, I still know him, he's a hustler too. He's a life coach now, Noel. And I drew my first party flyer for him. This is old school stuff. It'd be normally like a picture of something yeah, yeah, yeah. and then, hey, Friday, you know, handwritten. All that, and that was the beginning of my shift towards graphic design, right? I, uh, I was lucky enough to be living in the suburbs in a good school board that had like full computer 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I could get access to some computers and learn. That's how I learned about like graphic design stuff. And so I was drawing and making logos and I shifted. I go, oh, okay. Yeah, it's definitely like next phase of. Yeah, I'm going to, not comic books, graphic design. This and this, you know what I'm saying? That pulls you. That pulls you I've more. Than started the doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, not that it pulled me more. I still loved all that stuff. But I just, I'm, you know, I'm now making money from this. Not gotcha. like I'm okay. yeah, twenty yeah, bucks yeah, for yeah, a flyer. Yeah. Do someone's logo. Yeah. So I'm doing that. I left home when I was young, like seventeen. Moved in with my friends in his basement apartment, and they were rappers. And I sometimes would help them write lyrics. They had like their conscious black song, and I wrote some poem about church you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. and uh went to a poetry reading with one of them and one of our friends read poetry and at the end they said oh it's an open mic who want to come up and read a poem you can come read a poem i read the lyrics that i wrote for my friend to say hey come back and come back next week and you know do, it again. do a poem so now i'm writing poetry so it's a fun little hobby i'm writing poetry i'm going to be a graphic designer and this is when spoken word, I mean, like, this is when we had Deaf Poetry Yeah, yeah, yeah Deaf Poetry Jam. Okay. So spoken word was a, a thing. So Rap City, which is the before Rap City out here, the, the Much Music. You might all have to explain what that is for the younger culture. Damn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Much Music was Canadian MTV. They had a show called Rap City, and they did an episode with the local poets. So they invited me. And while I'm there... I say to the producer, Michelle Geister, I say to her, hey, what's up? So there's a guy named Big C. He's, he's, now, he's a record executive. Mm-hmm. But Big C at one point was working at Much Music. Now I understand he had an internship at Much Music. But, you know, back, especially back then, we are like, oh, you work at Much Music, you're rich. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, 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 you work in the, the TV. You're in this, the, you're the, in this the, field. You that's television. Rich. Yeah. Everyone's rich, apparently. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, <laughs> but he had left. He got a job at BMG. So I knew there was an empty position. So I said, oh, what's up with Big C's job? He said, none. So I was able, I, there was like a school program where you could do four days. It was called co-op. Of the five days of the week, you went to school one day. The other four days, you were in some place working. Working, yeah. You know what I'm saying? For credit. Like a work-study program or something. Yeah, exactly. So I got mine. I I combined it all. I'm working on much music four days a week. And while I'm there, I'm looking at the cameras and the lights, and I go, oh, this is interesting. Maybe this could be something I get into. You know what I mean? And it was right around the time Hype Williams was hitting the scene, so there was this art was happening. And, you know, so while I was there... I uh, actually after the co-op program, so it was it, it might have been a whole new school year. Either way, I left. I I left. I left where I was living. I left home, moved to. I was still out in the suburbs. I was still part of that mm-hmm. same big school board. Then I just moved in downtown Toronto, in a crazy fucked up neighborhood. And now I'm going to uh, Vaughn Road Collegiate Institute, and now I'm in a whole other. Now I see this school board's facilities where in totally different standard huh? in the suburbs ms dos rooms full of computers shining <laughs> All bright lights uh, 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 vaughn road two ms two pro two computers in the library running on ms dos old old school. this is the days of windows they had ms dos you know what i'm saying I'm like oh and begin to realize like if i grew up in this neighborhood the some part of the building blocks yeah, the foundation of, you know. Of how I was able to use these facilities, having access to technology that wouldn't have been available to me had I grew up here. But either way, in that school, I did a, I took all these things together. So my my art thesis, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, I said, I'm going to do a poetry music video. So I took this poem that my friend and I wrote. To, it was like this back and forth poem. And went to the people, my the relationships that I had made of much music. And I shot the performance with an ENG camera, the cameras they shot the news with. So there's a quality to it. I shot the storyline with a handy cam so that, you know, then yeah, that yeah. gritty feel felt purposeful. And I uh, asked, got one of the editors to help me cut it together. Right, and now in those days, 
it was impossible for someone using consumer equipment to get a song and for your lips to move in sync with the words. <laughs> impossible. Impossible to get it. Impossible to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, even with the type of equipment, you could like a little semi, you know what I'm saying? Like, remember there- Why would there, it, why, why, what makes it impossible? Because uh, video, videos have tracks. You have multiple, you have like, you have an audio track and a visual track. Mm -hmm. And in order to do something like that, you would have to have control of what professional editing equipment allows you to do is have precise control yeah, over. over the audio track and the video track. You Lining can, them up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lining them up or just recording something on the video. Just th this was what was needed. And but with the professional with the equipment at Much Music, I had access again, the technology, Tell the professional yeah. equipment, which is as I even say say it is so much of what has changed our world. Because now there is no difference, yeah. right? Now everyone on your phone, you have you access have, to every, yeah, yeah. You've, everything. The resources you that you had back then. Right. For me, I had to get into much music. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I made this poetry video. I actually spent a week going in. So now I'm not working on much music, but I still had the relationships. And this is before everyone was a card and a thing. And a, the, I would walk in and just wave at the security guard. And he just figured I still worked there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up? And I'll go after work. And when everyone when everyone had done, so I go maybe six seven o'clock, go in to Much Music, and wrote out uh, my EDL, my editor's decision list, for every single shot. So when I finally sat down with the editor, I, it was all it was just us it was just something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this kind of stuff. So then I had this uh, thing, but this, this is and that was really you know there's this this piece of work takes me to New York. This is what I show Hype Williams people and this is the thing I show people to show I had talent. Clearly it was received in yeah. a particular manner right away. Yeah, look, I had slow motion, I had dissolves. All the, again, all the stuff you take for granted. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah. could not do this. Like the dissolve of one scene to another, impossible. Slow motion. So I had like a music video and you could see, okay, this kid, there's something going on here. Yeah, there's yeah, some yeah, logic, yeah. there's some understanding. I, okay, all right. That's really, uh, that's talk about being resourceful. You took the knowledge that you learned there, the resources of being able to, you know, access to go there and really, did you create it with the idea that you would essentially use this as like a stepping stone or were you just, nah, This just, is my school project. Oh, there you go. You know, get my mark and work. keep it moving. But yeah. then it became this whole thing. Once that happened and you said it, it opened up a lot of doors, clearly. What were some of the... It's not that they opened doors okay. so much as when I kicked in the door, there you go. I had something to... I, there's a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, what, we, what, what the fuck? I, watch this. I put it in, the, put in their VCR. What, did you have a plan of action there? I was just young and hustling, right? So the same way I did with flyers. Like I would go to a party with my sketchbook and I'd go to the promoter and say, who does your... This is my line. It's my pitch. Who does your flyers? And you say, Jimmy. And go, Jimmy sucks. I'm better. He sucks. I'm better. And then show him my art. And they say, oh, shit. Okay. I'll you, you actually are. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll give you a shot to, you know what I mean? You know, I remember one of these dudes who's supposed to give me like 20 bucks and like gave me 15, like folded it. I still remember this fucking like, why would you f cheating someone out of five bucks, a kid? <laughs> <laughs> just, just had to, just had to cheat somebody. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah. You know, I had this idea in being in America. Of course, right now, Toronto is really well known in regards to the music scene in, in so many different <clears throat> areas, but I don't know if it was back then. Not at all. So how was that in regards to taking that next step in whatever you did with that particular video that you had? How did you feel stepping into American spaces with it? Being that it was poetry, it was, a, it was received differently. Were, okay. Right, yeah, like just people's, sense. you know, especially when it comes to hip hop, yeah, I mean, you know, look, you, you could have how many how many top five discussions can you have, and you know what I'm saying? Who's exactly. better than like yeah. it's like it's sports. Yeah. So by not engaging in that realm at all, people were able to just watch it for what it was. They didn't have to get into the beat is whack, and he did, and I don't like the that. I'm like none of that w was part of the conversation. I appreciate that. But in those days, it was really no one had crossed the border in any way. No one had really 
touch the American industry, the hip hop, the music industry from the black side of things, yeah. nobody had. So uh, everyone was just, there's, you had some, you had like one or two rappers that maybe kind of, there's a brother named Maestro Fresh West who had the the first like big rap song in Canada. Like they played it in Canada. He yeah. was a star in Canada, but it didn't. But it wasn't, man, it wasn't stepping over. Back then people were Toronto. You remember how you would you thought if someone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get in your time machine <laughs> 30 years ago, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. 30 years ago, Toronto, what? There are black people in Toronto? Oh, and you think you're going to make hip hop? <laughs> you know you're going to rap? You what? rap? Oh, fuck that. I mean, it was hard enough not being from New York back in those days. That was, you yeah, know what no, that, and that's, that's true. So, so for me, when I finally got on, even just being there, I mean, because I was on the scene in, in Toronto. So even just being an intern, in, in New York was like, oh, okay. That's, yeah, 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 no, that. It was a thing. And then when I started making videos, that's when it became like. All right, so, cause right there, it's like, yo, what, even being an intern in America, it's like, all right, did you think this is what I'm gonna do? Did you think, all right, you know, I'm just gonna take advantage of this opportunity in general? Like where, at what point did it, we're like, nah, I know that this is, number one, I can do this, I'm, I'm legit at this. And this is what I want to do, and I'm going to take this and run it. You know, when I first went to New York, I was only going to go like maybe I'll do a year. You know what I mean? I'm just going to do it, and then I'll come back. And my cousin, my cousin said to me, "If you start making money, you're not coming back." And I started making money. <laughs> That's probably the perspective for everybody that comes yeah. to America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You start making money, you never come, and I never just never went back, and just kept on hustling and grinding. You know, from an intern, I was interning for Hype Williams. Then I started drawing storyboards for him, and then I was able to, seeing all this stuff, started directing. I was able to go home and direct a couple things here and there, right? Um, then bring that back to America and say, look what I actually, here's the yeah. thing, get a little here. Like, you know, it's just little, little, you're chipping away at it and working your way up. And also, I tell kids, you're trying to come up, you need to do it within your subculture. Right. If you're a skater and you want to do something, go to the skate. Do it from your subculture, because they're the ones who are going to give you a shot. Def Jam gave me a shot. Bad Boy gave me a shot. Right. It took a long time before the major label said, "Okay." Even after I was shooting, but it was the hip Rockefeller gave me a shot. It was all the hip hop labels. It was yeah. my subculture that looked at me and said, "Oh, maybe. You, all right, kid. I like what you got going. Here's a, here's an opportunity. Here's a shot." Right, and that this is back before they all those record companies were in some corporate cubicle office. Mm. Each one of them had their own office. Some, you know, what I mean, they had their own thing going on, their own culture. Yeah, right. And um, those were what opened the doors for me. Uh, you know, I mean, all of us when come hip hop culture has done a lot for all of us. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a it complex changed relationship. The world. Absolutely, yeah, it changed the world and for the opportunities it gave us. And there's those hip hop labels and. All those guys, again, they've looked at me and said, I see talent where on the corporate side of things, they doubt they they doubted me when I had big even now I keep on getting th these moments when people were like, Well, you know, well this is a that and I, I know what that is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so I I, it, I it's, would yeah, yeah. I, I think that, you know, it's literally it's free game <clears throat> what you just said in regards to I think that's really valuable. A lot of uh, kids or anybody in a particular space they don't understand it's like doing it in your subculture that's the space that you actually you have the best understanding you know and they're gonna look the, at you yeah. as an equal exactly uh as opposed to stepping out of the, and, and not to say there's, there's value in stepping into new realms but if you already have a space where it's you feel comfortable to put something out there to, you know get it with like it's a test subject you have your subjects in regards work on different things so i appreciate that how you know when i think of like you, it, it, in you speaking about like what you were doing when you were interning with with Hype and working with Hype, who was Hype himself had at that point in time had created such a, a brand for himself. When you said you started doing storyboards for him, then I immediately started thinking about like, oh, you took your skill sets and immediately involved it. Like you added everything. That's it. your value came in the sense of like everything you could do. Yeah. So the fact that you became you know, drawing, that all helped. You know, when people yeah, think, it all, I think... It all came together. Exactly. And I, and another part of this, you know, I talk to a lot of kids and do a lot of these kind of interviews, but especially for that young generation. 
I was just doing it, right? I think we're very, our, our, this hustle culture, this got to get rich mentality. Yeah. I got to, you know, well, poetry doesn't fit into my master plan. I was just reading poems because I, you know, none, none of it had to do anything to it. I just, I, what, what you doing? I did yeah, it and <laughs> I did it and I felt, you know, I was just doing it. But it's a key element to my fucking success. Yeah. What, what music video was I going to make if I didn't have that poem? And again, the, the fact that I'm not, it's not some whack record. Look, it just, you can imagine what that was if it was some local Toronto rapper and now I'm showing New Yorkers the rap. You know what I'm saying? I was able to bypass all that with this poetry. Yeah. And, um, it's just how, how I keep coming back to this thing. You just do what you're compelled to do. Stop fucking trying to make everything another step in your dominant, uh, whatever fucking, you know what I'm saying? Not everything has to lead back to the goal and the this. Just, bro, just, especially when it comes to art. Just you're create. making art just, because you're making art. Just create. Just create. Uh, no, nah, that's perfect. And I think that, shoot, that speaks to me a lot. Like I, I can appreciate that. Um, and I do think that even in, this is the notion where I, in regards to the podcast, where I like that hearing you, because to me, that's all about the process. You don't necessarily have to know <laughs> how your process is going to look or what, what it's going to look like, how things are going to connect in that space. It's like, no, you do. Be productive, be productive internally, be productive externally. And yeah, then at some point in time, when you pull your head out, you're like, oh, shoot. I didn't realize that these things are going to connect. These things are all congruent in these aspects. So um I appreciate that, you know. At what at what point in time would you say that in in New York, you know, and and I I'm referencing this because New York becomes such a for many people it, it's a land of opportunity, but also there's a lot of intimidation that comes along with. And it does. It's a standard, you know, especially in the hip hop culture there's always like a high standard in New York pace and everything. Were there any what were some of the challenges and like perseverance, like moments of perseverance? In the, in your path or like in your process in that in that phase, I remember as an intern, one moving to New York City, if any, you know, if there were any. Well, from Toronto. Yeah. Oh, there's I mean, just the loneliness. It's just me. Yeah. Staying in my aunt's, you know, uncomfortable guest room. Which, by the way, if you, I am a firm believer from this experience, oh, in uncomfortable guest rooms, small. Good enough for your do it. It's do good enough for your moment, but not comfortable enough for you to say. I really think I, I could stay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this could be my room. No, no, no. Yeah. Nice single bed, small like you know New York City uh, Victorian era home. Just this little shoebox, a place where I could sleep, change my clothes, and immediately wanted to get the fuck out of there. Right? I, you know what's funny? That actually is, in my opinion. It's almost like imperative, and it's it's really good for growth because yes. it, you don't want to be there. Yes. It forces you to actually no, I like I'm so uncomfortable in this space that I'm gonna go outside and be productive somewhere else. I gotta get out. I of don't want to be here, so I need yeah. to, you know force. And, and they didn't even have cable. The, the one the one TV that had cable in my aunt's house was in their bedroom. If I wanted to, so you if I go. wanted to watch <laughs> television, I would have had to sit on my aunt and uncle's. Fuck, and not this is not, not my blood aunt, aunt and uncle. This is my mom's best friend aunt. It's I mean, Auntie you probably jo had to watch it with Auntie them too. Joan. You probably had to watch it with them too. Yeah, like, ain't just it's not. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's just we. Just, it's not. You know what I'm saying? It just it wasn't not, that kind not of what's space. Up. It's so not what you want. There yeah. ain't no TV to watch basically. And then the one TV that I could watch was in the kitchen. Was an old school like air wire yeah. television. So like. There was no, because the home was beautiful. My my little room was whatever, but there was not a living room for me to vegetate in. Yeah, it was not a video game. In so there was nothing yeah. in that home that I could just say, oh, I'm just going to do this today. I had to get the fuck out. So there'd be times I would just be in the office all night. I just rearrange. So I'm an intern. I did this. So the way the office, the way the office was made, right, it was just this loft space in uh, Greenwich, right? And the, they had the receptionist desk beside the door. So the door would open and people would just breeze by the receptionist because of the way they set it up. And then one day they opened up the door and the, re the receptionist table had been put in front of the door. Chairs had been, suddenly they walked in and there's a person yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? And I moved in and go, what, what happened? Oh, I rearranged all the furniture last night. This is way more effective. See? <laughs> 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 That's what happened, right? Yeah, I'm saying, like I'm just in here doing, oh, okay, this kid. All right, kid. All right, so that internship, 
by myself, running packages in the rain. Just it was it was a it was a lonely time. Um, as well, being a kid from Toronto, from New York, fr- living in New York, where the swag is different, like you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so like, totally. It's, 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 it's dumb, so I'm not really don't know how to talk. In general, I was fucking already not really super socially adept, right? So connecting with girls was hard. Like nothing just was. This wasn't a thing. It's I, a whole new. I, it's yeah, a whole, a whole new. Whole world new. And there's no fun. Like I couldn't go run off with girls. I couldn't go sit in the house. I just so the life became being in the office and then slowly making friendships with the other like yeah. the other PAs and all that kind of stuff and um slowly getting to a point where you know I maybe knew some people or I could do something. And then when I started drawing storyboards or paying me at this time it was like 150 bucks for some boards. But all right. Money. You know what I'm saying? I could afford a little piece of clothes or I could, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, it was all right. And it's just that slow grind up. And and even at one point remembering as an intern, getting frustrated at the internship. Like, man, I you know, you want more. You're feeling frustrated and you know what I mean? I could is that that's like a necessary it, stage for internship. You should. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think it's a necessary stage in life. Yeah. You you definitely when you begin to feel that I gotta get out of here feeling. That's growth. Yeah, it's like okay, on to next. Gotta, yeah, you gotta you gotta go. You gotta yeah. go. Do you uh was there any moments of doubt in the spaces where you were like, yo, I don't man, maybe this uh, the, is that actually came the moment of doubt was when I shot my first music video in like a full on record label, hundred thousand dollar, you know, and it was a complete disaster. <laughs> complete disaster. <laughs> I just didn't, it's one thing, you and your buddies and some equipment, and then you feel, you're, you're looking around like, well, ain't nobody got more experience. I'm in Canada, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys are shooting these little drinky dink music videos for local artists. Well, I'm, my, I might not be directing, but I'm sitting beside Hype Williams, learning from him, and you know what I mean? So I didn't feel like, oh gosh, you're a, you know? And then did this first video, and I got intimidated by you know, this this crew is a crew that works on this and the DP and they're all, you know what I mean? I just didn't have the confidence or, or the knowledge that's to do what I that, to do. That's a, in that moment, did you take it as, oh, like what, where did the, how did the doubt express itself and then at what point in time did you realize, oh, you know what, this is actually valuable for me? Men- mentorship is important here. Relationships, right? Like my, my hype was my mentor, but not like you know I'm teach you how the ways of the video. It wasn't that kind of thing. Yeah. It was like you could be around, and then I had this bad day. I was able to call him, and say, "Yo, I don't you know what I'm saying? I'm fucked up on this, bro." And he said, "All right, well, look that that feeling that you suck, that's the enemy. That's the feeling you have to fight. That's what you have to fight against, you know." And uh, another guy, Alan Ferguson, he's a director of photography. At the time, he's the director of photography. He's also director. <laughs> You probably know him, like when Solange started doing all those artsy fartsy videos. Mm-hmm. That was those two together. They were married at a moment, and oh, okay. yeah, yeah. he spoke to me technically about this is a light and that's a light, and it led me to studying. I went to the bookstore and about books about directing, about really not in directing. I bought the book. Of the there's books that like this is a this type of light, that's a that type of light. This is a C stand. This is a reflect. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I he bought put that you back. Book yeah, they, you, and read it. You went back on your grind. Back on. I the, went in the, what I the, the step I had skipped. I went. You had to go back to it. I had, you have to learn the craft, word. right? So I'm, I'm books on makeup, book on lighting, a bunch of books on lighting. You know what I mean? So I've read all these books and just do- dove into it. And <clears throat> I remember. Now remember, I'm running package to Def Jam. I'm doing this. I'm doing that, and they they know me, and they had this little Cormega promo that they wanted to shoot. And Cormega had an idea. He wanted to do an interrogation. And he wanted to do the interrogation scene from Scarface. Right? Um, it was a horrible creative. It was a horrible, horrible, <laughs> horrible creative. That sounds about right, though. Cormega. Yeah. But um, I stole a bunch of camera stuff from Clockers. I don't remember that Spike Lee movie. Yeah, and the DP, yeah, yeah. Malik Saeed, shot it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was able to call Malik and say, yo, how'd you like this? How'd you do that? And now I could speak the language. Oh, okay, I have a, this type of light over his head. I have a, this type of filter on the thing. I have this Promise filter, number four. And we're about four stops over, so the highlights flare. And then now, but now... Serious technical, yeah, that, that uh, there's a... 
There's an education and an understanding that you have now. In a well, yeah, field. all those books I had read, I now speak, I now understand this language. And I remember pointing at a light and saying, scrim that light. And then stopping and going, I said that. <laughs> and I'm right. <laughs> Not only did I speak the language, that's actually what needs to be done to that light. A scrim is a, a Yeah, net. you know, I don't, I said, yeah, I don't know. A, scr- a scrim... People- so ready to yeah, a, a scrim is a net. So if you ever on a movie set, you'll see these round nets. Yeah, they're yeah green. Okay. They're red. Sometimes they're half. Those are scrims, and there's levels of strength. But you put that in front of the light to to bring the light down. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So uh, when I had that moment, go, oh shit! You, <laughs> you, you, you recognize your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah I'm you know, what I'm leveling up. So um, that that moment was like, okay. And then I also carved this, I took this job and made it selfish for me. So, hey, Cormega, how about this? Half the day we shoot your amazing uh, commercial idea. (laughs) (laughs) Your genius idea. And then the other half of the day, give me one of your songs and I'll shoot a verse and a chorus for it. There you go. It's called client relations. You understand how to do it. (laughs) Yeah, I'll give you this, but you're going to get a little music video out of it. So in the basement of the studio, we shot a performance in the basement of the studio. And then upstairs, we shot, you know, I did some lighting thing. I shot another, and I cut together a little verse and chorus so I could show people, hey, look at this. And then from that, again, Def Jam, they gave me Richter scale, like EPMD video, 75 grand. And I did video for Richter scale. And that one was interesting because, again, the things I learned. So the way I lit this video, it's called hard light. Hard light is like sunlight, right? There's it's just, and so I drew even diagrams of where the lights went. It's around the intensity? Uh, it's around, well, the key is I wanted, to, I, shot, I wanted to do a hard light video. So I was going to put the lights up really high so you get the shadows under the eye. Like those, if you're watching a movie and maybe the bad guy's eyes are gone, and mm-hmm. it's just cheekbones and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's hard light, and where, okay. depending on where you put it. So um, I shot this hard light video EPMD, Richter scale, you see it. So they're in the shadows, they're coming in out of the shadows. And it's, but the key, and then I wanted to filter everything. Right, so there's these uh, filters. You, like you put a chocolate filter, makes everything brown. A sepia filter, mm. right? Uh, and but this uh, these filters block light. They cut light. So if you put in, say, a number three filter, that's that that make you may lose two, three stops of light. Of light. Like it, it'll really like you know if you ever put your uh, camera in the slow mo or you go into the big wide lens and saying, everything yeah. gets you know what I'm saying. So things get fucks with it and you need to cut so then you need to compensate so this is in the book if you put in a filter uh this level filter means this level compensation you put in a filter and i lose two stops of light well then i open up i let in two more stops of light and i get the color but i don't lose i don't suddenly my shadows don't go so i'm little x i've directed a promo so when they go you when you call the there's agents for directors of photography there's agents for production designers all these people so Little X wants to do a video. You're not getting the guy who just finished the Nike commercial. You're getting finally the guy I can never get work for. Maybe I can get him some work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the guy had maybe Usher on his reel, all that kind of stuff. It's this guy. And we're shooting a scene. Again, it's hard light. So there's just, there's like the thing that the light touches and then it's darkness already properly exposed. Then I put in like these filters. So it's even less light. And I say to the guy, as we're shooting something, and something just the whisper, I call it the whisper. And, and the whisper goes, ask about compensation. What's the compensation on a number three filter? I don't compensate. What? I don't compensate. And I went, that's, oh, so that's, you already recognized that's, it. That's, well, my brother, that's weird because. <laughs> All the books say you have to compensate. But I guess you're like a real live DP. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you actually doing it. So maybe out here in the real world, the books are wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're, we go to the color correct. This is the days of film. So, you, you know, what you see on your monitor is not necessarily what will be. How it's going to actually, yeah. What it'll actually be. So we go to the color correct. We're looking at the footage. And up comes the footage from that shot. And what you see is the cheekbones again where the light hits so you see a little bit of light here and a little bit on his forehead and a little bit of that then uh his white t-shirt and the rest is pitch black (laughs) nothing the whole fucking thing is underexposed and the guy's in there with us and he goes 
Oh. The moment we, it comes up, he goes, I go, this looks underexposed. He goes, oh, well, you know, I got to go to the next meeting. So he backs up his stuff and fucking gets the fuck out of there. You know what I'm saying? He, um, he but knew right away. He knew right away. <laughs> he knew it was time to go. But it was, it, this is what taught me even that. It don't matter their resume. It don't matter. If you hear that voice, you know what I'm saying? Trust but me. Because as, as what will happen, the, the need for a director... And this can translate pretty easily, I think, for everybody. If, if you are in a field where there's now some technical aspect to it, right? You, the reason why you need to learn it, not that say one day, like, I'm going to go fucking be the DP of some fucking thing. But when, we well, when they start, when that guy with the technical knowledge wants to do something or has a different idea, Right for all kinds of reasons. Absolutely. Say yeah, you're whatever, young. Say you have some color in your skin. Say you're a woman. There's a whole set of people in the world that just their inner self just wants to tell you no. Wants to talk you out of it. Wants to make you do something. Just for, no fucking rhyme or reason. But this is how some people are, and they're more so yeah, that they're way. Just, they're, they just might be contrast to you. Literally, they just might be. That might be their personality Absolutely. type. But when you start adding in the, the the factors of this world that make them think. You inherently are less than me. You inherently know less than me. You inherently are not as good as me. Because you exist in the skin you exist in, in the gender that you are, Damn. whatever fucking, the age, that whatever fucking reason they've decided, you are less than me, and I'm just going to fuck with you. Might make them sit anti, just anything. Any just thought, anti anything. Any, yeah, anything that you, you present. So the only way you can push back on that is knowing what the fuck you're talking about. And then even, and the bigger lesson was, even if they might have a little, they might be done with Fuck it, how I don't care. My gut is telling me this is what we're doing. And never in my almost 30 years of directing has I done something on gut instinct and gone against what someone's trying to tell me and been like, fuck, I fucked up. I should have listened to that other guy. Never once, 30 years, not once, but I can think of a gang of fucking times. <laughs> it's the opposite. Where the opposite is true, where I went against my instinct, where I listened to the guy with his technical knowledge, and he was wrong, always. So, yeah, these, these, little, these little lessons begin to form philosophies for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I build rules out of them. I, it becomes curriculum, in my opinion. Like yeah. When you, and this is why, like, you could, I'm, I'm almost positive you probably could write curriculum in regards to, you know, based upon the amount of experience that you have. And I think that in being a director, you, of course, you do. You oversee it, in my opinion, like everything. But how much of directing for you is really around communication? Like, I don't know, and I don't, I'm, because I'm, this is, I'm speaking from a very ignorant place, and there's, there's naivete in the sense of not knowing the specifics of what it takes, but really just believing, just in the understanding of, like, essentially, if you are overseeing a lot of different, and you have a vision, the vision comes from you, and it starts with you, and you have to get others to express your vision. Yeah, it is in your best interest to know <laughs> what they're supposed to be doing, and what, yeah. even when they say that, and also to be able to communicate. And then, based upon your communication, see, well, how are they expressing what I'm trying to communicate? Okay, it's not, it's not working, X, Y, Z. So, like, can you, you build on that a little bit in regards to, like, what communication, what that process of communication might look like? It all, it all comes in. Like, the technical knowledge also. Yeah. Look, human beings, we're a pack species or a group species, right? Yeah. And we need a leader, right? Like, sometimes I think about if aliens were just watching us, and they're like, <laughs> okay, so these, these beings will all pack in by the tens of thousands into these structures and then just watch, watch <laughs> one of them yeah. or watch a little group of them. They all, you know what I'm saying? They're constantly just all focusing on the one thing. And then from the focus of the thing, it kind of bounces back, back to all of them. So they, they join their energy on the one and then that one sends all that energy back to them and there's some... Thing happening with this, the behavior of this species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, you know, you could be working in motherfucking McDonald's. If the manager doesn't really know how the fries work and the fucking burgers flip, the team would be like, yo, why is this, motherf why is he, yeah, why, why is this motherfucker in charge? Yeah. That's... He don't even know how to fucking make the milk machine work. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the beginning of the end of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the beginning so, of the end of So it's a constant that. So I think a base level 
is being able to move through because the film crew is the same way, right? Um, who the fuck, could, you know, the director walks in. This guy's the director? Yeah, go to a Weaver step in and we'll lay a track. Well, we don't have that kind of track. Do you have a curved track? What about four foot? Okay, yeah, I got a four foot in truck. So let's get a four foot. And um, all right, should it take about 20 minutes to make this move? Well, let's go. Okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. Right. On that level. Yeah. Okay, so level one, he's actually one of us. Okay. Level two, you get into, well, how are, how are you communicating? Right? So, you know, now where it might be, okay, so the camera goes here and we're going to pan over there. I'll say, we're, camera starts here because we're setting up the elevator for a later payoff. So he comes in, elevator set up, in walks the hero, pan over there, thing there. Then we'll, we'll, when he comes, when the hero has been drugged and crawling, when his friend comes in through the elevator, we've already set, so this is the payoff of the elevator setup for earlier. Yeah. And the crew's like, it's, okay. it's just going, you know what I'm saying? So I've, I've, I've now even begun to speak that language for... The crew where it might not be the, they might not need to know that this is a setup payoff situation for what they're technically going to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But there's a part of this where they are part of the storytelling process. So for them, okay. They get, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So in they my, this, and this is where I'm at now, you know, finally getting to this place where communicating in this way, um, my rules that I've learned from music video, where, you know, there's a time, music video is a young space, and there'd be a time where you're like, your art director has an opinion about the schedule, and then the DP has something to say about the fucking furniture. And, the, and whenever I listened, whenever a DP said something about the sets, and I listened to them, it fucked something up. Whenever I, li whenever I listened to anybody outside of their department, it fucked something up. <laughs> so I made a rule. You get your department, you're, you get to be right about your department. You're 100% wrong about everyone else's. That's your rule. If you come to me as my production designer and want to engage in a conversation about lighting, I'm not listening. I don't care. That's not what you're here to do. And you sure as fuck would have an issue if the DP came in here and started talking about your shit and Absolutely. I listened to him. Right, so I don't care. Um, it's actually dangerous with the way my brain thinks because now I actually, I, I did a job in this fucking, my production designer kept on talking about cameras and lenses and shots and I was disregarding him on that. But then when he talked about his thing, I was beginning to disregard him on that too and I had to catch myself Ooh. that I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to associate you with you someone must, I should be disregarding even in the places where I shouldn't be to regarding. Trust you, yeah, we should actually try, yeah. Right, so there's that. And, and at the higher levels, like in film, uh, like real proper mm -hmm. like not an indie but you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, film and television yeah, and where yeah, everyone's yeah. on their shit and doing their thing i find very rarely does someone cross into cross someone else's territory then the other rule is like i told you before gut instinct making me so if i say we're going to shoot this way and then the person says well what if we shot that way no if you're trying to make me change my mind the answer is no hmm. period but if I say, let's shoot this way, and they go, what if we shot it with the such and such? Yes. And then we use the such and such with the such and such. Yes. Well, it's interesting well, because... Well, here's what I'm saying. Okay, go for it. So long if, you're, if, if you are building on the direction I have given... There you go. Okay. It's yeah. a yes. Yeah. Without question. Absolutely. Let's make the wall blue. What if we made it cobalt blue? Yes. And shot... Yes. That's a... And that's a form of communication as well, because how to get across their perspective in regards to adding to yours. Now we're, and so, and cause of, so a few things happen now. You now get to be, you have this freedom within your department. You get to hear yes when we're moving in, in, in the right, you know what I'm saying? If we're going this way. The, the issue, not even the issue, because what starts to happen in a leadership position and people can make you change your mind, you undermine yourself, and they're like, why is he even here? Exactly. I'm the one who said, 
they think I'm practically you hear it in it's a the, human thing it's, it's a human a, thing absolutely like, I'm practically the boss I'm the guy who told him I told him not to do that and then he did this and now look at that yeah, he's not even confident he don't, you, even, you, he don't even trust his own you, exactly absolutely. whether they say it or it's just subconsciously happening it also undermines your thing. So on one, on one level, one, you're wrong. They made you change your mind. I guarantee you're not going to be happy with the fucking end result. Okay. Two, you've undermined your position here. Like this keeps stacking and stacking as opposed to, you know, I'll have my cameramen on jobs. Like the, maybe the last two shows I was on, the cameraman come to me like, yo, man, I'm, yo, bro, I like working with you. I get to talk and you listen and we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have it. Hey, the shot, I need the shot low. Well, what if we put on this and did on that and then we did that? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you get to open up their creativity. You're not just some puppet for me to control. You're another creative. It's a bunch of the ideas that we're a bunch of creatives being creative together and, and inspiring, especially now in the age where you can't raise your voice and you can't get angry, Right. You can't, I can't say to my steady cam guy, that's the big camera rig, smooth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't, I can't, I, yo, yo, I don't know what, that's yeah. a whole different culture. Yeah, it's a big, that's, <laughs> you've seen it. It's the, yeah. You got on a vest and there's like an arm and it connects to the camera and it's a whole fucking steady cam yeah, operator. Yeah, you gotta be mindful how you talk to everybody. Yeah, you gotta know all this shit. So, so say we're gonna go walking and we're gonna this and we're gonna that and what I, and I, now this man has a lot of control of what the image is gonna be. There was a time when you get frustrated when you didn't like, yo, man, I don't, I don't, 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 you can't do that anymore. So now you need to inspire Absolutely, yeah. this better work out of them. And say, yo, man, I really want you to listen. I need you to listen to your instinct. Move where the instinct tells you. Really find the shot. Find the art. Be free with it. Just listen to your gut. And you, you know what I mean? When it whispers to you, go to that place and let's, let's make a beautiful image as we go here. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the, these kinds of things. Was that natural for you, or was that something you had to? It's just to learn. learning, learning just the new language. Learn. Just yeah. learning how to like. You just can't getting getting angry and frustrated with people doesn't help. Beyond even the culture of that's not how our culture is operating right now. Yeah. It also doesn't make them make better work. Now they're fucking, especially your men talking to men. Yo, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Now what the fuck was that? Shutting down immediately. Yeah. Dude, man, this new this motherfucker lucky. I can. <laughs> motherfucker lucky. I need my fucking job. Talk to me that way. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You can, and then you start to see how you they, start to see, and the, what the, you the work will clearly express what, itself. The, in if it. you're lucky, they'll shut down to professional. Oh well, let me just turn off let this. Me just, let me just turn off this passion. Yeah, and I'll just give you my. And look. is that what you is that what you want though? No, of no, course not. No, I'm yes. saying if you're lucky, if you're, lu- yeah, if you're like, lucky, yeah, lucky you, yeah. if, you, if you're lucky, words, yeah. they'll just go. Okay, I'm gonna go professional. If you're, if worse, they'll say, I don't give a fuck. Hey, we got to move. We're late. The sun's going down. You know what I'm saying? In passion mode, we're all yeah, on it. We're all in it together. Towards the common you know what I'm saying? And on top of that, uh, listen, I'm not the most friendliest, you know what I'm saying? I'm a quiet guy, kind of stone-faced. It take you a minute to, to understand what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in, in this personality type, because I can't, I'm focused on shooting this thing. I'm not, I'm not going to put my energy into minstreling for you. I'm not going to artificially put on an air for yeah, we're, we're. Uh, the, the crew or for anybody. I'm not doing that. But as time goes on, you will warm up. And until you warm up, you will understand this motherfucker knows what the fuck he's doing. And... He's letting me be creative, and he's listening to the things I have to say. You know what I'm saying? And and after a while, what will happen is they will un- they begin to understand that they'll begin to put their ideas forward. That's when I know we've reached that point. Yo, X, yes, I was working yeah. on this, and I have, and I thought maybe, yeah, okay, great, pro, love it, fucking, this is great, sure. You know what I'm saying? And this is where it goes. That's okay. So. That phases right into my next thought because that essentially becomes like an overarching, like you have a massive vantage point in being the director and you're seeing this like, yeah, you're actually helping them grow, helping them build individually in micro into the macro of your, so what does it look like in regards to what makes a successful 
project? Like what, you know what I mean? Is it, and I think that this, you know, it might change, it might grow based upon like, you know, what your perspective of it was maybe 20 years ago versus now. Are you, is it more about the end result of the project or are you more now thinking of, you know, what success is at the end of the day, what we created and how the individuals, well, it's, it's like how, you know what I mean? Like what, it's, it's a few things. Like, have you ever, have you ever played a game where you actually, this is one of your best games for you personally? Yeah, the things I, you did. Exactly. Okay, now this, you go. Yeah. I've I've reached I, yo, this this I'm this is top of top of my yeah. my performance as an athlete, but you lost the game. Yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So there's there's those kinds of things where you artistically might have made something great, but no one saw it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No mm-hmm. one watched it. Superfly is one of those. All right? Superfly's test scores. So in Hollywood, there's a they call it top two boxes. Did you like it? Would you recommend it? Um, they did. We we did three screenings, three test screenings. The scores were seventy four percent in the first screening in the top two boxes, mm-hmm. unheard of. Second screening was seventy five percent in the top two boxes, unheard of. The third screening was seventy eight percent. Top two boxes, unbelievable. Those are those He's are getting, but yeah, un, those are unreal test scores this audience would yell and scream and hoot and holler and the i mean the head of sony pictures was in the third screening like what the fuck is happening in this room yeah never seen anything like it so like okay we got a hit no we're good but the audience that didn't know the good time they could have if they went in between the good time they would have in a theater and them right now was black people being pimps and drug dealers and and this is right after Black Panther part one. Oh. So hey brother Wakanda forever everyone's say, feeling different yeah, mother, yeah, yeah, man, literally my mother wore a dashiki to see Black Panther. My mother. Yeah. My bougie ass mother. You know what I'm saying? That's well, the antithesis. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> of, with like when you when you yes. Yeah, absolutely. And so the, the last major picture, kings and queens in Africa, and then <laughs> We're like, hey, black people, remember go drug dealing? This, yeah. Go enjoy this drug <laughs> dealing pit movie. Remember, yeah, like, hey, everyone feeling good? Feeling like kings and queens of the what you could be in the world? We are, bro. We are, brother. Yes, brother. We feel great. Good. I have this uh, movie about us killing one another yeah. and selling drugs to the community. Uh, who? Right. Damn, yeah. So to, to the audience, it was like, oh, so the Illuminati doesn't like us. Illuminati sauce. Much, you yeah, literally yeah, yeah, saw yeah, yeah, this yeah, yeah, thing yeah, yeah. on social media. Yeah. Like, oh, y'all, y'all feeling a little too put, powerful yeah, out exactly. here. Let me hit you with a little motherfucking negative black stereotypes. You know what I'm saying? So Damn. for the audience, but they don't know that the movie is actually about a drug dealer with a heart of gold who doesn't want to kill. And he'll, if he could just sell, if he could just get out to sell enough drugs to, to get out of the out, game, yeah. he could be clean and not have the blood of murder on his hands. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's it's John Wick. It's Fast and Furious. It's it's a you know what I'm saying John Wick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember John Wick is about Russian gangsters. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in the he's in the <laughs> Russian mafia. You know what I'm saying? It's a fucking action. So it's a dumb action movie in the world of drug dealing. Yeah, right. But the the audience didn't know that's what it was, and they they weren't told that's what it was, and the people that were marketing it didn't understand that's what they needed to say. That you know what I'm saying? It's about a drug dealer with a heart of gold. Who yeah, wants you can't to, speak to it just being. Yeah, so that. But all the time, I'll see you know pop up on my feed. Superfly. When you watch it, watch watch Superfly in your dumb action mo- movie brain. You'll have a great time because it's just a dumb action movie, yeah. and we deserve those. Yeah, yeah, no. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, why yeah. can't we just have motherfucking John Wick? Why can't we have fat? Why can't we have motherfucking uh, unrelated to the struggle? fucking action adventure movie no 1000 percent. you so so they're both and you said you spoke about the dichotomy of they're both that's a that's seen as success to you did you enjoy i don't want to say that did you enjoy but is that the space you're in right now in regards to creating are you creating because i feel like in based upon what i've seen and I'm watching from afar the things that you're creating now are really passionate to 
your lifestyle, passionate to the things that you, and this is where we're like, we're, we're going to transition more into, I guess, some of the new stuff, but really passionate to like who you are and your lifestyle. You know, is that fair to say? Is that fair to Yeah. Say? I mean, look, at the core of it, storytelling, the higher purpose of storytelling yeah, the root. is to speak about the world. You either say this is the world is and this is how you should, it's either this is how the world is or this is what the world could be or this is how you should move through the world. Mm -hmm. But it, there's a statement, you're making a statement about the world today or where, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that is the higher purpose. Where, where would we be without Star Trek, the original Star Trek series? Yeah. Humanity. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? No, so the, these, there, there is a purpose there. So when you're making something, finding well what am i saying what and not everything needs to be prof as profound as star no, not trek at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you should be having a conversation about the world in some form some shape you know so the projects i i things that i actually create you know i, I was brought in the superfly and I, i'm i was able as best i could to make it a true uh retelling of the original film mm -hmm. but the things i make are always I'm, it's that i'm always looking i have to find that what am i saying about the world what are we you know what i'm saying what are we doing here is there a part of you that's trying to express yourself through your um maybe some like beliefs okay depending on the one you know what i mean uh some things i want to shine light on yeah, yeah, yeah you know like there's some projects that i'm working on now that involve a police officer main character okay and some of them are quite directly because i have a friend who's a cop and he's a good guy yeah he wants he to be a cop to fucking he's one of the cops you want like yeah, he's, he's a cop yeah, you want yeah, he wants yeah. to help the community yeah. he i met him through my community work and you know he's having town halls with talking about you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's what you want. You're what you're looking for. Big, strong man that wants to help the yeah, fucking community, the yeah, get absolutely. kids off the street, and do what needs to be done. And so, you know, I have a project or two that's speaking to that because the narrative is so very much about when we think of cops, we just think of these maniacs uh -huh. rolling through the neighborhood, fucking getting at everyone. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, all right, the, the, I have a short film about. It's called Seven Mothers. You should actually see about uh, about um, Jean Kirby from Pierre Moss, a clothing line. Mm -hmm. And his mother died when he was very young, and these seven women raised him. I'm talking about how the spirit speaks beyond the grave. That's what that movie's about. You know what I'm saying? On on the level, the story is about a kid being raised by seven women. Underlining, really underlining your child. Under underneath yeah. that, I'm saying the spirit lives beyond the body, and this is how it speaks. Coincidences, dreams, things you hear. There's a mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. This is how the world actually works. You know what I mean. So, I think this is this is the core of it all. You have a lot of a lot of kids. You you get drawn into storytelling from that surface level. I want to tell the story about the time. Um, my, so, you know what I'm saying? X Y Z. Yeah. I want to do an action movie, and it's going to be a spy. Okay, this is all great. But it, the the core of this thing, the actual nutrition, you like a steak because you like the fucking taste. Yeah, yeah. But the, the in there, the, the, the iron and the, yeah. the nutrients. How's the steak gonna actually make you exactly <laughs> healthier, stronger, whatever? It may exactly. Be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is that is the root of this. This is what makes it important, and that's also um, the chef should know that the person eating doesn't need to need to know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I think that's, uh, yeah, in any realm, chef, storyteller, doctor, lawyer, whatever, that those are the aspects where when you have that understanding of how to attract, entice your or whatever your audience is and then give them what they need in the same capacity, that's, a, that's where you become gold, man. That's, a, that's where you start to see. In that, where does like the truth and honesty play in regards to your process right now with with creating um i mean i don't know truth and honesty would be the wording there uh unless you're applying it to your art 
the, you know what I'm saying? I think the truth and honesty comes yeah. uh, it applies to you as an artist. So it's yes, not so much what's yeah, in the exactly. art, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. in the art. It's that's what I mean. Not why, yeah, your decision making process, why you're doing something. Mm -hmm. Again, um, my my big hit music videos, I just made. I heard the song, I had an idea, I made it. And then you make another video and you start thinking about the one you made that was a big hit. So yes. people, if, uh, well, people like sets, they like dancing. People like red. If I'd make a red set and someone would <laughs> dance, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the, 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 that, that thing you're trying to get, you had none of that going on in your head. Yeah. You're not going to recreate that by, you know what I'm saying? Like no, everyone, absolutely. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? It speaks to the, uh, the idea that usually when you look at artists, their first album where they've had the ability to just create. Yeah. And then they, it's a phenomenal album and then they sign a record deal and they have pressure of they have to make this or make something like this. So, you know, some of the labels and They start looking at their first yeah, album. Exactly. Why well, was that hot? Well, people like I when I, this. and then, then, then they shit. also like when I do that. So they, yeah, you know what I mean? So, like no, they're trying, they're, they're, there shouldn't be an end result and the end result definitely, I mean, I, the honesty and the purity of art is that you should be just expressing. Mm -hmm. I, be, I believe even trying to say, I really want to paint a good picture is almost too much. Just, just paint. You know, I, you know what I'm saying? Just, just, paint. Just, be, just paint. So even, even, and that's a subtle one that we can all understand. Mm -hmm. I want to paint a good picture that's going to uh, go viral. I want to make a thing that's going to thing. I think all these, and it's hard to, Keep that out. I'm like, and I'm superstitious too. So if we're shooting something and someone comes up to me, goes, "Yo, X, this is crazy. It's gonna be a fucking smash." I'm like, "Oh, oh but <laughs> mm, fucking jinx the whole yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. thing." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, I hate that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah, hate that. Yeah. I, hate, I, I hate when people hit me with that. So it's 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 the. You you know what I'm saying? You, you see where I'm at with? Yeah, it. no, I definitely I I. I agree with that in regards to that's the the notion around it's almost like just stay in it. Don't get caught up in a lot of the exteriors and that's the part of when I think about process like just stay in the process. Stay in it. Make investments, just stay in it. Whatever that is, like little little things here and there to one step towards whatever you're creating when you start to pull back too much or hear the outside and I have this notion especially nowadays and maybe it's because of accessibility and the internet and like you've, things are accessed just mm. so much that the thing, like the thing that makes it so great also, it destroys, it destroys patience. It destroys a lot of process in regards to people are so willing to skip state. They think yeah. it's like, oh, fast because it is instant access. And the idea that being famous or being known, you know what I mean? In a space outside of just being good and yeah. doing. And it's like, no, no, no. I used to always, in regards to ball, I used to always think, I don't care. I don't want to be known. I just want to be good at what I'm doing. Yeah, and that's what, you know what I mean. Wondering. And it's, it's like, I feel like if I'm in a space that I'm good at what I'm doing, then the other stuff will come if need be. Is that is that the equivalent of the artistic purity? Yeah, with, like with, for me, it's... Like if, did you see it happen? Have you witnessed... Yeah, like what's well, the, is because it the fame? I, or the, yeah, it's like the... the People that want to be just known, they just want to have fame. Where I'm like, but they don't even care if it, they don't want to be known for actually doing anything necessarily. They just right. want to actually be seen. And I'm like, yeah, but so the the sports might get them to a place, but if yeah, and, I, and the, the initial dream is the, the you're a sports superstar and everyone yeah, knows like, oh, you. Want to know. As but if I if I need to divert and become a motherfucking whatever, yeah, it's that, like yeah, yeah. One, it's like well, wait a minute, I just wanted to be really good at whatever sport I was playing. Yeah, I, I like I had a craft that I loved and enjoyed doing, and I was like, I want to be really good at this, and I want to compete with the best. You know, because back in the day, we didn't guys didn't know you didn't you know we didn't know how much guys made. Like now, there's so much of an enticing attribute to yo you see what so-and-so's made like I, I tell people I'm like why wouldn't somebody want to be a, become an athlete if you look at this is what you see it's like yeah if these are the funnel the resources and everything like that when you knowing how much these dudes are making for me it was like no I loved Barry Sanders because he was a baller I had no idea what it's got <laughs> you right. know what I mean it wasn't a but now we, we're just in this space with instant access and everything and it's not just sports it's like with the internet you know where I think it deters people because they're like, well, I might really love to do this. I might really enjoy just engaging in this. Like you said, 
I don't know. I just like to do this. I'm compelled to do this. But it's like, well, I don't know. Is it going to... What's the success? You know, what's yeah, the, what's the, the, the material? Exactly, return. I, I, you know, when I think about it, I think we're a purposeless world. We don't have a mission as yeah. a as a and the, because what the mission should be is be, cleaning up be, the planet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Regardless, I don't want to get whatever. We all know that you should be able you should be able to walk to, down yeah. to the local body of water and get and in it. Clean. Yeah, and if you <laughs> swim in it and drink it, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. If it's if it's not salt water. You should be able should to be drink able to. and swim in that water. We all know that, and we all know you can fucking not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the insurmountable, like it just, even if we were, even if we removed corporate interests, even if we removed the corruption yeah. from what this would take, it's daunting. These boats, these things, these all the air, all the, the way our technology allows our life also fucks up yeah. our, our planet. Then you add in Chevron fucking purposely polluting the Amazon to kill the indigenous. Mm -hmm. And then uh, pr corrupting the government enough that the lawyer that won the case on behalf of those indigenous people were able to put him on house arrest yes, for crazy. over a year. You know Steve Dozinger, you know this yeah. story? Mm -hmm. What they were able to do to Steve Dozinger. So, like I said, cleaning up the Amazon and its pollution is already daunting. If everyone was just being, if we, the whole world said, "Let's clean this clean up, it up," it would fuck. It would be Ooh. yeah. It would be a heavy. No, no. Then on top of it, let's clean it up. Enough. Well, how about I fucking lock you in your house for over a fucking year? Like, Yo, <laughs> that's it. And I, that's but that's the thing. It's like energetically, clearly, you can see from a macro aspect the priorities are. Well, I see. I see this. That everyone is cosplaying activism because I've what I feel is there's two parts of the human nature, one to help other people to protect. Yeah, I do think to, that's, for an, things, inter for that's things, an intrinsic. To, yeah, absolutely. we want things to be better. How can I help make it better? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then there's another part of human nature to not commit suicide. <laughs> 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 so don't don't do something that yeah. will kill you. Yeah, and deep in your brain, you know. If you have something to say about that oil pipeline or that secret war that's, really that's good going on over there or the, the real things that need to be addressed, yeah, right? It, it, this isn't no one will listen to me and I'm going to get ignored. In today's day and age, it is suicide. Your career could go away. There are all kinds of things that will happen. So what I see happening is people picking safe topics to fight over. The Earth is flat. Oh, bro, you, <laughs> you're a real, you're you're a real uh, truth teller. You're, a re, you're I mean, the, I'm inspired by the way you fight the power. Um, you want to come with me to this oil line pipe protest? I, I, I'm busy with my flat Earth. Because <laughs> when you know, you that'll know, change your world when you find you, out that you do whether the, it is. Yeah. Oh, you be careful, bro. They never, they might come get you. You know, you all know, you're none of you are in danger. But you got you are you uh, protesting the drone program? Are you pointing out the civilian cost in these Middle yeah. Eastern engagements? Well, now you are actually now yeah, you no, you're actually, oh now they yeah. are listening to you. Now you are in danger. And then on the flip side, oh, pronouns are very important. Pronouns are important. It is it is the thing that I am <laughs> championing. Wow, you're really concerned about the state of the world. Do you want to come to the oil pipeline? Pro oh, 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 I got this whole <laughs> pronoun thing I'm on. Oh, really? Well, how about you want to do this? Um, you want to do this? Uh, you know, the wireless wi wire attack. I would, but there's this. Uh, you know, this there's this. Uh, the, again, there's this. Re there's this other, you know, this other, other really again. important thing. So everyone is playing at social activism. Everyone is playing at fighting the power. You think that, is that a justification to make themselves feel you better? Need, you, it, like, like we said, there's yeah. a part of your human nature that wants to make the world better and write, in, write injustices. You know what I'm saying? Because it does, it's a conflict. It's like... But if, these, the, if we, yeah. live, we, you know the way the world works now, they'll come fucking get you. Yeah, we're... Like if you, I feel like we should ask, if you could ask everyone, if you weren't worried about your safety, what would you really want to fight for? If you knew that you could never be harmed in any capacity, 
What right. would be the real the, priority? The, the old school where the, yeah. the courts would say, no, exactly. no, no, you can't make, no, no, he, ha, he can say that. Yeah. What would the real priorities be in regards to issues? What things would exactly. we take on? As individuals, just think it in your head. Don't say it out loud. Don't type it or tweet it. (laughs) (laughs) Just think it to yourself. Exactly. Put your phone in the in the refrigerator, and you have this conversation with your friends about what you uh, really are concerned about. But um, yeah. What uh, let's tap into now. With that being said, I I know for you know one of the things that I've followed with you in regards to. I look at this as for me it's it's all it's all around like health and wellness and the space of really how it benefits us as a people in regards to meditation and you know I've seen you speak in regards to kids and a lot of times and how this it it has the ability to actually change lives and change I you know in I want to say like essentially like change rewire us in regards to how we process things how we which essentially will then change how we move throughout the world how we move through you know in our interactions with individuals so yeah let's talk about that in regards to you know your uh that field that you stepped into in the, well, the prefrontal yeah, you know uh, or, or how well, yeah how it, like what yeah you in the, this this is one that i was brought into i've uh I was shot in 2015, right? Bullet went through mm-hmm. two people, hit me in the back. And uh, from that, it, it wasn't the catalyst for me to start talking about it. It wasn't why I started meditating. I was already meditating. Mm-hmm. But I got invited to a TED Talk, to do a TED Talk, and I decided to do it on meditation, what meditation does to the brain, and used it through my storytelling. Um, it, this was... It brought me into that space, right? And so it was really about violence, the, vi- the, vi- the violent and aggressive person. I come across these studies that said violent and aggressive people, they call it antisocial personality disorder, mm. right? Um, their prefrontal cortex is smaller than the average person. That's your decision making. It's the part of your brain that is the executive function of your brain. It's the part of your brain that decides, I'm in a room full of people. I don't think I should masturbate. <laughs> 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 this is what the prefrontal, yeah, yeah, yeah. prefrontal cortex gives you social cues. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, then your amygdala, the amygdala of the violent and aggressive person is too big. Your amygdala is emotional control, right? And as well, the amygdala can actually turn off the prefrontal cortex. If your emotions hit a peak... Yeah, it, it will say we're not thinking, and then well, away you go. I don't know if you've ever blacked out. Your your brain turns off, and then so you ha- you have the memory. Okay, here I am. This and guy then, is aggressively threatening me. Then I don't remember anything, and then I remember grabbing him, throwing yeah, 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 him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that that's that's what happens. So meditation gives volume to the prefrontal cortex makes it grow mm-hmm. and it shrinks the amygdala the exact opposite, opposite of the violent and aggressive brain so i remember seeing this study right mm-hmm. i brought them all together in my ted talk i saw this study about hey the you're the violent person the criminal brain is different than the normal brain and it gets into that mm-hmm. then um see the stuff about meditation what it does to the brain well that's interesting and then i saw another study about uh childhood abuse and neglect and it says, oh, childhood abuse and neglect. And the paper I saw said it permanently damages the brain. Children who are abused or neglected, their prefrontal cortex shrinks and their amygdala enlarges. So meditation then essentially would? Reverse that as well. Well, it's an easy thing to track. Children that are violent, and children that are abused or neglected, Punching your kid and ignoring your kid are the same, same fucking thing. Yeah, thing. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've read a lot. <laughs> that. You absolutely. know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. So it makes their prefrontal cortex smaller than it should be, and it makes their amygdala larger than it should be. So their emotions are big and their critical thinking is small. Uh, the violent and aggressive person, antisocial personnel, whatever term you want to use, mm-hmm. right? Their prefrontal cortex is too small, their amygdala is too big, so it's not hard to figure out how the violent adult gets there. They were abused and neglected children. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then stress. So say you grew up in a loving household, but you decided to become a police officer or a fucking first responder. Yeah. Um, stress shrinks your prefrontal cortex and enlarges your amygdala, making you more violent and aggressive. And if the stress is constant enough, it will lock in your fight or flight response. It don't take but yeah, one or two people trying to hit you with their car as a cop to say, well, how about I'm not going <laughs> to... No, absolutely. You know what? I'm not going to let that happen. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Your brain I'm makes take, it... Yeah, your brain does That's it. Like, self-pres- it's it's funny, self-preservation. I, exactly. It's like it becomes to a point where your body, and this is a nature versus nurture, it's like your bodies, they're, to me, they're like two and the same. You're going to, based upon the environment that you've experienced, your body neurologically, physiologically will adapt to preserve yourself in that environment. Exactly. And so meditation reverses this. Meditation mm-hmm. gives volume to the prefrontal cortex, shrinks the amygdala. It basically uh, moves your, your snap point away. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where, where once you might have, you know, look, again. Yeah, anything could have triggered you. Yeah, real, yeah, we yeah. all had a friend growing yeah. up. It didn't take nothing for them to go directly into the fucking shit. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So meditation can move that along. And you want to get that, that is the beauty of it. And that so on both sides, so for the violent, for the violent and aggressive person, this can help calm them the fuck down. For the person who grew up in the environment of violent and aggressive people without even having to be one themselves, it still had a damaging effect on their brain, mm-hmm. right? That can be repaired through meditation. Um, and I do this TED talk called Message to the Man Who Shot Me. And in that, I use my being shot as a uh, conversation with that person into what would make people, and I structure it in a filmmaker structure. I structure it with proper story structure. Like I could teach it in class, right? The, and I'm, the introduction, mm. stating the theme, setup. Catalyst, debate, second act, yeah, yeah, yeah. midpoint, and finale. All those things are clearly marked in that thing. And people don't know why, but they just get sucked in. I with the with my ability to, yeah, with no, my ability really to do easy. this, and then within that is actually something meaningful. Mm-hmm. I'm narratively I got you. And then what I'm saying makes sense, and it makes more sense because you also uh, wrapped you're, up you're in you're this. In the, in, you know in, what I'm saying? In, yeah. No. So when we when I walked off stage, everyone was like, "We got to help you do that." What do, every, you know what I mean? Just people f- literally flocked to us. We want to help. What can we do to help you? And um, in that, now we have a documentary called "Quiet Mind, Silent Streets." I should show it to you. If it's like 17 minutes after we do yeah, this, yeah. Um, and Headspace funded it. It's about a community. There's a there's a part of Toronto called Malton. In the greater Toronto area, Malton is like a West End, small working class mm-hmm. uh, community. And when the violence hit, Malton went fucking haywire. You know what I'm saying? The, the big shooting, 140 rounds. Some kid just waiting to get picked up by a family member gets hit, doesn't survive. The whole community's just devastating. You know, some kids, just when they go, you remember growing up, some yeah, people yeah. just rock when they pass. And it rocked everybody. So this teacher says to her class, let's start meditating. And the, you know, bringing a bunch of black kids, and you know what I'm saying? And they're like, fuck out of here. What the fuck yeah, are you yeah, talking yeah. about? You want to what? Close your eyes and breathe. And they all, you know, they thought it was idiotic. So she shows her, she shows them my TED talk. She shows them J. Cole. She shows them Annalie Choppa. She shows them people who, if their life turned out to be one of these people, they'd feel like they had done well. Mm-hmm. And these people are all talking about meditation. So they give it a shot. And it changes their lives. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's, this, is, this is the doc that we did. And right now, we're just wrapping up our run of uh, film festivals. It premiered in... TIFF, which is the Toronto International yeah. Film Festival. It's won awards all over the place for in a nice short doc. So very soon we'll be able to really publicly, it won't just be me telling you, you'd be, and here's the link, and here it is for you to watch. And really made to be shown to students. 
Is there an initiative you're trying to, or are you literally just trying to create awareness around? The, the, op, the operation is to spread the knowledge, because that's the key, yeah. right? The, the, the whole point of meditation is you don't, then call me, and I will give you the blah, 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 yeah. and then the go, and I go, oh, meditation, that sounds like a good idea. How to meditate. Um, the gazillion apps, but duh. I'm, and then you do it yourself, and exactly. next thing you know, you're, you're going to have this moment. When you meditate, right, after a few weeks, or not after a few weeks, at some point in yeah, your meditation point, yeah. journey, you're going to have this thing will happen to you. Some event will happen in your day-to-day -day life, and you'll say, you know, not so long ago, I would have <laughs> reacted to this. <laughs> you'll see. Yeah, exactly. You'll go, this would have been a whole other situation yeah. two months ago. But it's not. You'll see how the practice You'll <laughs> You'll, you'll <laughs> yeah. really have that it's, moment it, in yeah. your life. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, so that that is that is what we're here to do because that's what I'm fucking good at. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm, I'm not interested in all this. Other, like I'm, it's exhausting hustle culture. It's exhausting. The you know, idea that, you're not it, in that space. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, bro, I like my art. <laughs> I like to make my art. God has blessed me to be able to live from my art. And there you go. And my art has now my interests, you know, my poetry, my mm -hmm. comic books and my graphic design have all coming to me becoming a filmmaker. Well, my nerdy science shit and my story structure study and but you know what I'm saying? All these mm -hmm. things have come together that I can make a piece of content that uh, can educate and you know what I'm saying? It yeah. does what I needed to do. So that that that's that's our mission. Educating people about what meditation can do for them and in very real terms and in places where it's needed, not soccer moms. And I mean, which is fine, but there's also, we know these are black kids in the hood meditating. This is, this is a whole other conversation opens a whole other set of doors. No, I, I, it's, it's you to know? me. That's where, and uh, talk about potential pushback that, that will change internally it'll change the whole host of things it'll change the way they see themselves yep which and you know if that's the foundation you change the way you see yourself you're going to change the way you you're going to see your world now are you implementing that frame of thinking in regards to your team or like in your work how how does that no i mean people got to find it themselves i'm not yeah, here yeah, like yeah, okay no, no. if you want to work with me you need to meditate every I'm not yeah because i was gonna that it. that to me becomes like a mm. Is, it's just not my place. Yeah, it's just also, and, it's, and, and I don't. Whack. It's whack. It, it just becomes ass because, like you said, meditation is one of those things where it's like it's it's yours, you know. And I do for for me, I used to tell people I was like, meditation is. It looks very different, for many different people, you know. And we know uh, as someone who meditates as well as you know there are different types of meditation, you know. I used to tell people I was like, you know, this notion of no mind. Where everybody believes, you know, I think a lot of people think that initially when they sit and meditate, it's like you have to think of nothing. I'm like, that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the moment you say think of nothing, you're going to start thinking of something. Yeah. And for some people, I was like, yeah, that's no mind. And if you get to that, wonderful. I was like, but sometimes in meditation, I allow myself to just... Let the thoughts come through. Yeah. My my meditation yeah. is a visualization. Now. Exactly. Meditation. There's that. That's you know. You talk about manifestation. Absolutely. It's yeah. like there's so many different. Like listen, I've been actively meditating my entire life. I used to wash dishes. That was like one of the yeah. things I do, and I loved it. And people used to be like, "What do you mean you loved it?" I was like, "No," because I used to literally, the methodical motion of washing dishes became meditation to me where I could just like breathe mm -hmm. and like slow it down. I could move as fast as I wanted or, you know, the very wax on, wax off notion. And I used to tell people, it's like anything that you do in life can become meditative. I was like, but that's up to you in regards to whether you're in it, out of it, focused, whether you're, there's intention yeah. behind, you know, those type of things. So I do, I'm, I am very big on Giving people the awareness of it can look many different ways for you. You got to find one that works for you, and that's yeah, the push. Absolutely, but we should get you to shoot one of our. We have a guided meditation series, absolutely, yeah, which yeah. is just different people doing their meditation. Some people do mantras, you know. Some exactly. people, I do my visualization. Everyone has a different form of meditation, absolutely. And the point of the series is that try them and do the one you like. One thousand percent. So we, we need one from you. We'll shoot one with you. I'm we'll with get you the little, the, the little how to okay, <laughs> deck. Yeah, yeah. But um. Yeah, and that that's really what it comes down to. I've 
I, I started with the Silva method. And lately I've been doing something called the gateway okay. meditation, which is even just like I found it. There's a this CIA unclassified, declassified CIA document that talks about this meditation technique. I Googled it and it's like on YouTube. They got this, this, <laughs> they just, tapes are on YouTube. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, let's try doing it. Check and it's another, out. it's essentially very much when these methods came out, the Hemi Sync or the, the Gateway yeah, yeah, program yeah. and the Silva method, they're very much um, using meditation to manifest your whatever. But at the same time, they both have a body calming thing mm -hmm. right where you just kind of there's there's steps in which your your body relaxes and then there's another step where your brain kind of gets to this so you know what i mean you're just kind of relaxing everything and then when you're in this super relaxed state you start visualizing goals mm -hmm. right uh, as vividly as you can those both those programs are saying to you these things you're visualizing will some way shape or form will come true which a lot of you know, we hear all this manifestation talk. Maybe. But I'll tell you, it feels fucking great. Just closing your, calming your body, calming your mind, and then for 10 minutes visualizing that hope, dream, goal at its absolute pinnacle that you could imagine it being, it's a wonderful way to start your day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I'm, I am personally, I'm big on the visualization aspect because for me, if I can energetically picture something, that's like the first. Because my belief is like, if I can think it, it exists in some capacity. Mm. That's the first step. It was like, I can't think of anything that doesn't, you know? Yeah. I was like, if, so for me, it's always been part of the, and I think that, and this is the perspective I take on and it's worked for me. It's, it's reinforced my, my lifestyle, which has then reinforced my perspective again. Essentially that, the calming to be in a to, to be able to actually manifest, I have to be able to be in a calm state regarding visualization. Mm. It's like if I go like this over your face, how you gonna be able to see? Is it easier to see like this or is it easier to see it like this? Right. So what would put me in a state where calming would allow? It's like yeah, meditation would do that for me to be able to like clear things up. It does. It feels clear mind, and this is why in regards to clear mind, whether it be anti-violence <laughs> whether it be <clears throat> focus yep. productivity whatever it may relationships be. Yeah, absolutely, whatever, absolutely to everything communicate. benefits yeah you know my daughters asked me the other day and it was a while ago they're like daddy why you meditate and i said daddy might do really bad things if it <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if i didn't and i and i when i said that i was laughing but i thought about i was like especially as somebody that is paying attention to a lot of things that's going on how do you it's like the world when you look at the world and this might be as someone as, as well you're paying attention to a lot of different things and you see all the quote-unquote atrocities and all the and all the things that are going on in the world that don't make sense and that you know like mm, this is it is easy if you don't have tools to be able to channel and calm this it's like yeah you could allow the the world to affect every aspect of your world very easily. So I do think we need tools and this is why to feel equipped to be actual, to actually calm yourself down, control your, you know, yeah, whatever it and is. There, and there's very, f almost every version of antisocial behavior, let's just call it, you know what I'm saying, violence, mm -hmm. yeah. even sexual abuse. When there's someone who's done a study on meditation and on the vast majority, I've, I've, I've yet to see a study where it says, yeah, this didn't work. There's, I saw one on, on uh, young offenders. They're sex offenders, young, yeah. young sex offenders. And I remember one of, the, one of the, like, they have the very academic, these are the standards for which improvement mm -hmm. will be. And one of them, it really, one of them was very interesting. Uh, they, the kids said they weren't afraid of their own thoughts. Uh, what? You have these young sex offenders. And go through the meditation program, and one of the things they felt improved, they were not afraid of their own thoughts. That's uh, because we, I mean, we live, we, we're not in a, we don't live in an empathetic world, yeah. right? And there's crimes that are just so egregious, you, you run and says, Well, what happened? You just, oh my god, this is a horrible person and a horrible thing, and clearly the, the solution is 
removing them, killing them. They're, they're, you know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never in the world did I ever think you, there's, you know, there's this kid who can't control their urges and it scares them. You know what I mean? Like at some point they must sit there and say, yo, I'm this is not, I shouldn't be doing this. And, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? And meditation, even for them, right? Uh, the most violent prison in Mexico, the, the, Mex they had a riot and killed 44 people. If Toronto has 44 people die, if there are 44 gonna, murders yeah, in yeah, yeah. a city of millions of people, it's been a bad year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In a, this riot, they killed 44 people in the riot. The inmates and the guards start yeah. meditating. The extreme violence ends. You know what I'm saying? So whenever, wherever I look, then on they did a program in a school in New York, a couple schools, some kind of New York thing. Only the teachers meditated. They found after a while... They felt more confident about their teaching. They weren't harsh in their discipline. They're actually more inquisitive. Like, yeah. why are you acting like Timmy? Come here. What's yeah. going on with you? Well, let me talk. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that, they can actually. Th that was just the yo. teachers. You know what I'm saying? Then when you go to the places where they got the kids to do it, yeah. There's a there's, uh, San Fran had some this school like the worst neighborhood. Their middle school, there there were dead bodies on the playground one time. They start meditating. The worst behaved kids become their highest academic achievers. Like you know, they like it just yeah, 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 it, it yeah. flips everything upside down, and really, um, it angers me to a bit. Right? Good thing I meditate, so I don't feel the fucking. Yeah, anger, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Because you don't <laughs> take, you don't take still, not taking that on and internalizing it. Yeah. But for the fact that we know all this, and meditation is not just a part of the school curriculum from the beginning. Forget junior high or high school from grade school is criminal negligence that but that yeah and that's the, it's like you know you know that it, it in some degree it's intentional um, you yeah. know I know that you know I, I just think that there are certain things that when you learn them it's like oh that makes perfect sense and then I look at certain situations that are the leaders and I'm like why is that not being emphasized when I'm in this position? And I know that. I mean, even even on the even on the level, the non the non conspiracy level. Yeah. Bureaucracy moves slow. They don't like to change, and a big part of changing would be admitting, possibly that they wrong. had been doing something wrong. wrong. And it is we right now in our society admitting that you weren't right a hundred percent of the time. They're, they'd rather burn it all down. <laughs> burn it all, yeah. They'd rather it, it all just houses. come down than to just yeah, burn down we the house will, will, rather than say, you know, we'll maybe we should use a... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we might want to change it. You know what? We realized that, you know, based upon what we did, we understand why we did it, but yeah. no, no, that's not... <laughs> no, they'd rather let it all burn to the ground and with it, hopefully, the, the, the knowledge that they made a mistake burn to the ground with them, with that. So, I mean, we're watching it go, like, again... We just came through quite a well, moment. Yeah, it's a <laughs> We're all still dealing with, you know, exactly. I mean, all, and all of that. But since we live in a world where you cannot admit a mistake, here we are. You know what I'm saying? Um, interesting, interesting moment for all of us. So, in regards to, you know, as somebody who's watched your career grow and change and evolve and all the different things, and as a fan, where are you now in regards to your, with who you are as Lil X, Director X, Julian, across the board, you, you know, you said combining it all. What are you doing now project-wise? I mean, I'm, I'm creating, I'm writing, um, but the big one for me right now, I have a TV show that I created uh, that's coming out in Canada in the fall called Robin Hood. Oh, duh. It's Robin with a Y because it's a girl. Get okay. It? Robin yeah, 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 I got. <laughs> they, yeah. Um, they live at the corner of Sherwood and Forest. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And um, modern, the, modern day, modern day Robin Certified. Hood. They live in the Sherwood Towers at the corner of Sherwood and Forest. And John Prince wants to buy the towers from the city because they, you know, they're living mm -hmm. in the housing housing projects. He wants to buy the public housing from the city. Tear it down and build some fucking monstrous fucking. Con he wants to do something. With yeah, it. He something wants crazy. To, and they all got to move, and they're fighting back. You know what I'm saying? John Prince 
has the sheriff of New Nottingham in his pocket, so he's using all his wealth and powerful connections to fuck with the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they fight back, right? Um, so there's that. And the really, there's a lot of messaging in there that's really based in real, in community, friends as family, and this being how you overcome. If you look out into your life and you don't see a way to live a fulfilled one, and this is the place a lot of people are in, right? You don't, you'll never, you just can't afford the thing. You'll never mm -hmm. get the job. You, you just don't see it coming together. This can drive, this is what drives people to the state of wanting to commit suicide, either hurt themselves or, or hurt other exact, people. Yeah, absolutely. All right? And the people who can overcome this are those with strong social bonds. Your neighborhood is tight. Your building is tight. Your family is tight. Your friends are tight. You have friendships mm -hmm. that, you know what I'm saying? You have an extended, you have this. Yeah, you have health. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is how you get through. So this is one of the core underlying tenets of how we built the show, the way we address community, right? How that community gets along. Um, we deal in, uh, there's a guy named Chris Hedges. He's a Pulitzer, so you, everyone listening should Google Chris Hedges. He's a quite impressive guy. And he talks about uh, you fight fascists because they're fascists. <laughs> Not because you're going to win. You don't fight fascists because you'll win. Absolutely. You fight fascists because they're fascists. So we get, there's that. The, the reward is in the, is in the action because the consequences. Yeah, it's so not about when you like, fight. You absolutely. fight the fights that need to be fought. Win absolutely. or losing doesn't matter. That's the reward, right? And that this is there. So in in this, I still it, it's a young adult show. It's meant mm -hmm. for a young adult audience, but in it, we're still addressing real things. And you know what I'm saying? It, sometimes some of these issues are symbolic. Of it's not. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's essentially a superhero show, but we're we're talking about what's really happening in the world. I mean, we we live in the second Gilded Age, right now. Um, you know, the writers are on strike, the actors are on strike, there's, there's a um, bunch of port workers right now on yeah. strike. There's a whole, it's, it's snapping, right? Yeah, there's def absolutely. So it, the levees are in our way, yeah. And so in our way, we, we're, we're speaking to that. So um, global television, Stack TV in Canada, oh, okay. uh, Wednesday, way, yeah. 10.30, uh, after Survivor. You know what I'm saying? Okay, all right. So that that's uh, that's where we're at with it. How'd you get it? How'd you get involved in that project? I created it. Oh, wonderful! So you know, going around town pitching it. Someone said I like that idea. It is very interesting. It takes about a good ten years to make something from the time you go. I have an idea. To I want to make that with you. Yeah, yeah. It's this process of just bringing on people saying I like that. I'll help. I like that. I'll help. All the way getting to someone's like I like actually, that. I'll pay money for yeah, it. Exactly. And even you know what I'm saying? Actually it, helping. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, getting into the it's a whole thing of just moving yeah. it forward, moving it forward. You know what I mean? It's it's a whole process. But um, I mean that's the life I chose. No, wonderful. Man. I think uh, that's a that's dope. Uh, and I like hearing that. I, you know, like I said, I've always liked your, t your storytelling, so I, I look forward to seeing it, especially from a little different spin and how you put your spin on it. Um, well, actually, there's three. What would you say in regards to, you know, you spoke so much, you definitely gave free game to so many. But in what space would you literally feel that you're the wisest, where you could step in any room and say, hey, I have an understanding of this? Storytelling. Is it because you've told so many stories or is it because you believe the way you look at storytelling? I'm fanatical. I'm a fundamentalist. It's my religion. I can appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is, this is where it all goes. So, yes. It all go and comes back to storytelling. If, 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 you, you might not know these terms, but you will be getting in our story <laughs> conversation... Um, well, you know, the, your catalyst is in the wrong place. You never, you're, you're, you're stating the theme in the third act. It needs to be right early up on, here yeah, after the introduction. On. You know what I'm saying? And this, you, this setup never pays off. You're surgical with it. This feels like a payoff, but now we need to set it up. 
You can't touch that thing and not have that set up. You have to now, since you set that up there, that demands that this character has to pay that line off. You know what I'm saying? Like this is these and are. You they, always saw it as that before you could even articulate it. You I've, always, I've, I've had a. I've always been a good storyteller. Even yeah. in my, if you look at my early music videos, I, I always had kind of an innate yeah, thing yeah, with yeah. it. But again, now we get into the nitty gritty and speaking the language and yeah. all, all that kind of stuff. And like I said, I'm not. I'm not dumbing down for anyone. And you might have to catch up, but I guarantee you, it's gonna be a whole letter better fucking episode. It's going to be better fucking move. It's going to be whatever it is we're working on. (laughs) It's going to be better, right? And if you ignore me, you will be in the edit trying to fix these things. What's one thing that you love about your process right now? Um, I think that's it. I love love that nerdy, I love the inner workings, you know, like a... Like detail. You seem very detail yeah. You know what I mean? Like I think everyone, when you're in it, like I call it the jazz level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when you, you, you know what I'm saying? The type of jazz that musicians mm-hmm. fuck with, or when they, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. And you hear them even say things. I remember I'm watching an interview, and it's the musicianship uh, is so crazy. That yeah, the, it's, it's the Rolling Stones. It's either the drummer talking about the guitar player, or vice versa. It goes, oh man, he used to fuck with me, and then he'd do this, and then I'd have to do that. I go, how the fuck does a drummer fuck with the guitar? How do they fuck with each other on st- What are you talking about? There's, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we yeah, just yeah, hear yeah. the music going. The fact that he's like, does a little yeah, thing with the thing that demands that the drummer has to thing with the that, and like, we're, they're existing at a level yeah, that we, don't that we pro- can't yeah. fathom. And, I, and every industry has that. And I enjoy being in that place in the storytelling realm. And existing with peers that were speaking that language together, where you know yeah. what I'm saying, they know what little. Th- oh yeah, I see what you did. I yeah, yeah. yeah. Did if I if I say Chekhov's gun, that's just I'm just you have no idea what I'm saying. No, I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> Not uh, a clue. A, a proper writer knows exactly what the fuck I just said. <laughs> I like that. What's one thing about your process that you either don't like or would like to improve? Um, Bureaucracy, slow moving people, you know, people just don't just that that that's my frustration. Squares, to be quite honest with you, squares frustrate me. I'm I'm, 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 I'm you know what I'm saying. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a circle, a roll. And I move. I like to move with other circles, and we can we get rolling. The squares are squares. Squares they are squares. Don't fucking roll, and this is a business that needs to roll. And even there's squares with round edges. But sometimes they're still fucking square. Oh, oh you're, I for, most of you are square. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's, uh, it, those, those, that, that's hard. That's hard. Especially in, I was talking to someone in the music industry just um, yesterday about the whole point of that's what, the that, industry. Yeah, it's it's like, you think there's, the cool industries yeah. are slow moving. Imagine the square ones. You know what I'm saying? They really don't move. You know what I'm saying? So that's my frustration. That uh, there, there's a, there's a, there's definitely a set of people that good enough is good enough, and then there's people that good is not great. How do you work? What are to allow yourself because you're in that world to be in that space? Is that? Does meditation help? What are some of the things that you do to help? Yeah, meditation like, helps. Yeah, to like, allow I, yourself to you just don't manage know. that. Yes. Yeah, so just on a project I'm working on, I got some bad news about a thing I've been setting up for a year that didn't start moving till a few months ago. Yeah. And I got the word yesterday that it's not happening. So I wanted to write the email and say, hey, let's get on a Zoom to discuss this thing that I set up a year ago has now fallen apart in the last minute. And didn't really get rolling until a month ago. Yeah. Let's have. And then in the writing of it, I calmed. And what what purpose will it serve for me to just say, "Hey, everybody, can I have an email? Can I, let's zoom so I can curse you out. Yeah. Let's, you know, what I'm saying, let's have an angry. Can <laughs> we have I a really want to do? Can it, we have yeah. an uncomfortable zoom? And I said no. And then I, then it's calmed and said, "All right, I set it up a year ago. I'm very disappointed that it has fallen apart. Can we get on a zoom to discuss perhaps if there's a piece of this that can be salvaged, or if it cannot?" What we, is our yeah, new plan of attack? Step? Because the thing that this is addressing has to be addressed. And then, okay. Now it's not the same Zoom. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, you so, definitely. That's that's the redirection of energy and the solution based. I mean, even when I got the news, I wasn't enraged. I yeah, was yeah, yeah. disappointed, and then, but you know what I'm saying. But I definitely remember a time in my life where no, oh, we need a Zoom to get everyone needs to so get definitely, yelled at. But you, <laughs> you definitely took that level of discomfort though. I was like, let me redirect this energy. Yeah, a little bit exactly. Better. All right. Final question that I do is, um, you know, I asked you what you do, and you are clear in that. But who are you? Who am I? Yeah. Um. I'm a human being that expresses himself through art. And um, hopefully art that impacts the world in a positive way and moves it in, a, in the right direction, a positive direction. What's a positive direction to you? Um, being able to fucking swim in a river, <laughs> being <laughs> simple, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> being able, like, uh, yeah, we're 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 um, a less reactive world. Just we, we know we want we, we can have utopia. We can have it. You know what I mean? We 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 will get it. Yeah, one day. But uh, to get get to that, where you know everyone's really kind of thriving doing their best in a planet that is thriving. Yeah, human beings thriving, doing their best on a planet that is thriving and doing its best. Yeah, they work, work in cold, hand in hand. Well, I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, man. And you are definitely out here doing the work, and I know for a fact that you are helping a lot of individuals in regards to creatively, but also changing lives in regards to taking those steps towards, you know, in a positive manner, which essentially individually, if you're helping people's lives, that's who, that's who we're going to change, you know, change the way the world looks and, and how they see the world. And if you see the world in a different place, then you'll treat the world in a different place, in my opinion. Yeah, man. So I, I appreciate you and thank you for being a part of this and um, hope you enjoyed yourself. I had a great time. Thank you, bro. Um, yeah, thanks for, for being a part of this episode with X, Lil X, Julian. I'm calling him Julian just because I don't, all the other stuff. I, I don't know him as that. I know him as Julian. But uh, uh, thanks for being a part of this episode. Welcome to Profits and Process. <laughs>